If you guys watch my YouTube channel, you can see that I had posted a video on sharpening. Uh, what media you can use, how to hand sharpen, that kind of stuff. I had a couple guys reach out to me afterwards and ask me to do a video about stropping. Um, how to make one, how to use one. So that's what I'm going to walk you through in this video. So I am going to show you how to clean a leather strop. A lot of people think that you can't, but you can when it starts getting really caked up. I'm going to show you how to attach a leather strop onto glass, and then I'm also going to show you how to build a wooden one with some bench hooks. It doesn't matter which one you choose, whether it's wood or glass, it's okay. This piece of glass, this isn't float glass. This is left over from, I think, like a china cabinet or something like that that I kept the glass out of specifically for this, and then if I wanted to build picture frames or something. People say float glass because it tends to stay flat more, but if you're going the glass route, I can't imagine you're going to be holding the glass in the air and stropping. You're going to have it on a flat surface. So if it flexes, it's flexing onto a flat surface, especially if you're clamping it down. So that's kind of up to you. I mean, I wouldn't go really thin because I don't want you to break it. But I prefer a wooden strop because I, got, I started off with glass, and I didn't like having to clamp it down. So I made this wooden one with some bench hooks that can hook onto my granite plate at the sharpening station so I can just hook it onto there and, and start stropping. The other thing I want to mention is I did an experiment where I suspended the leather. So my thought was bare leather wouldn't roll over your edge. So you could have it suspended, not have to worry about the angle, just drop and go to town. Now, it worked when the leather was staying taut. But now that the leather is sinking, it's rolling the edge back over. So the experiment, failure. So when you're doing this, I recommend you have it attached to something flat. I've seen some people use the, the like barber ones that are out like this, and they just kind of, you know, go... I've never tried one of those for woodworking tools, and I think when you use them, you're, it's still going to matter how you hold it. It's just going to be more difficult because it's in the air. So anything that you're doing, attach it down. Now, some of the materials that I use, I think the most important thing is the leather. So I bought this leather for the experiment. It's only an H, in, one eighth inch thick. <laughs> I prefer thicker leather, but the thicker you go, the more expensive it is, and I didn't really notice a difference, so I prefer the thicker one just because I feel like it's softer to use, but I didn't notice a difference in how well it struck the iron or not. So, go with whatever thickness you want. I don't know that I would go thinner than one-eighth of an inch. Um, and then the next thing is you want to make sure it's vegetable tanned leather. So, you're going to want to get some mineral spirits. I use this to clean the glass before I attach the strop to it. Um, just some contact adhesive. The brand doesn't matter. I use this on the glass also. When I'm attaching it to wood, I just use, this is Tide Bond 2. Um, it, it works fantastic. I've never had any issues with it. A lot of people think you can't use it from leather to wood, but you can. Definitely going to want some clamps. You're going to see me use two leather tools. I mean, I think they're leather tools. That's what I use them for. This is a casting wheel. When you are getting ready to cut the leather, this creates an indent that I just find it's easier for the Zacto knife to follow, but it's not necessary. I also use a roller. I definitely recommend getting some kind of roller. It doesn't have to be wooden. It can be rubber, whatever you want, but something that can push the leather down into the adhesive onto the flat surface to help kind of flatten it out for you because you definitely want to make sure that it's flat and none of the edges are, are sticking up. When we get to cleaning the leather, you're going to want just, just a, a razor blade. Of course, a pen, um, rags, and then I use a saw because I was cutting out the wooden one. So, let's go ahead and get to it. I will show you cleaning, attaching to glass, making the wooden one, attaching the wooden one, and then I'll show you how to use it. Um, I forgot. So, to protect your bench, this is one of those tips that I learned. I don't, it just popped in my mind one day. I was tired of trying to find something to protect my bench, you know, cardboard and, and plastic bags and all this kind of stuff that you got to throw away. So this is just an old shower curtain, uh, the waterproof ones, of course. Are all of them waterproof? I mean, they have to be. The outer shower curtain, maybe, I guess is what I'm thinking. Not like those cloth ones. Either way, find something that's waterproof. Um, I use this to go over my bench, and then if there's any kind of glue or anything on it, it just pops right off. So you can take that glue off if it starts getting too dirty. Um, I use it to paint. I use it everything. Just get an old piece of shower curtain, and um, I just kind of roll it up and 
put it over there until I need it for next time. All right, let's get to it. All right, so welcome to the sharpening station. This is the strop that we just made on top of the granite plate. This is the plate that I use to flatten the stones with some silicon carbide powder. Uh, if you haven't watched the sharpening video, it talks a little bit about that in here. So that's why you see all the, the crap and it's all dirty. I could have cleaned it, but I don't care. So this is the leather strop that we just made. I am the kind of woodworker that's going to point everything out to you, I guess YouTube creator now, uh, is going to point everything out to you and not hide my mistakes. So if you see these indents over here, these are from the clamps. So the ones on this side aren't as bad. Over here, you can't even tell that there were clamps. What I'm thinking happened is I didn't have any backer on here. So when I put weight, it was tilted like this and the clamps were digging in. They were digging in on this side. So when you guys make this, put something here that's as thick as the hooks, use different clamps, put a longer piece of wood down and clamp it to that something, or else you'll have these indents. Um, it's not a big deal to me because they're on the outside. Same with these ones over here because I'm primarily going to sit here and then right here for the backs. So I designed this one this way. I wanted to be able to do stropping this way for the bevels and then this way for the backs. I guess you could go this way for the backs too, but that's what's comfortable for me. So when you're designing this, wherever you're going to hook it to, figure out what's comfortable for you. Don't make it complicated. It doesn't matter. So 
first off, I'm going to put some compound on here. Um, I don't know how old this compound is. It's just a green stick from Woodstock Internationals. I don't know, though. Um, if I find the link on Amazon, I'll, I'll post it up there for you. So let me put some compound on here. When you put the compound, you can put as much as you want. You can load it up completely. You can do stripes like that. You can do X's. You can do whatever. I haven't found that it makes any kind of difference. Um, if you do want to load it up right away, just remember you can clean it off. So when it comes to stropping, this is freehand. Um, I, I definitely don't recommend using a jig. You can. I have seen some people that set it up in the jig and they pull back, roll it forward, pull back, roll it forward. You can use a jig if this makes you nervous. But if you watch that sharpening video, you'd see how easy it is to hand sharpen. Um, you're doing the same thing on top of this. So let me show it to you sideways. First, how you hold the iron. I always forget that part. So I like to wrap my fingers around here, rest it on my palm, and then I just use two fingers. I don't care if there's more pressure on the outsides than the middle because if it develops that camber, that's okay with me because I don't want the corners digging into the workpiece anyways, and they make rollers and stuff like that to get a camber. So I only do it like this. I've seen some people put a finger here, hold their wrist. I, whatever you do, just make sure that you are comfortable. That's the most important piece. Find what works for you and run with it. It doesn't matter. Keep it simple. So when you have your strop, this is the same thing that you do on a stone. So you want to set it down, find your primary, see it stop, primary, primary. Okay, let me scoot it over here maybe. Nope. Okay, so you set it down, find your primary, slightly up. I'll do it again. Set it down, find your primary, slightly up. If you can't find a primary because sometimes you have so many bevels on an iron, maybe you're too lazy to regrind it, whatever, that's okay. Set it down. Find what's close enough to a primary, slightly up. If it keeps going and you end up right here, that's fine. Okay. You do want to try to match whatever you were doing on the stone, but I don't want you guys to stress on that if you're new to freehand. Don't make that a big deal right now because eventually it will become muscle memory. And that's why when you watch all the other sharpening videos, they just boom, 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 and they go crazy. Okay. They've been doing it for a long time. You're not there yet, and that is absolutely okay. You've got to learn somewhere, and this is where you learn. You set it down, find the primary, slightly up. That will become muscle memory for you, okay? So let me show you what that looks like in action here. Set it down, find the primary, slightly up, and you go. Set it down, find the primary, slightly up. Set it down, find the primary, slightly up, okay? So there you go. Now, when it comes to the backs, I probably should have put compound on this side too. Okay. When it comes to the back of the irons, I like to set it down and then drop it. Set it down and drop it. You don't want to lift up. You just want to set it down, drop it flat, pull it back. Set it down, drop it flat, pull it back. Down, flat, back. Okay. I've seen some people go sideways. I don't recommend that because it can cut into here and you really don't want to have cuts and stuff. Um, if you get one cut, please don't stress. Please don't feel like you have to throw it all away. Um, if you saw the other one, that's got cuts and stuff all through it and I use it without any issues. So hold your iron, set it down, find the primary, slightly up, go. When you're going to the back, set it down, lay it flat, pull it back. I don't do long swipes. You can, if you want to go over here, you can set it down, long swipe. Set it down, long swipe, you can. But really, it's only the very tip of this that matters. On that note, if you are doing the Rob Cosman um, ruler trick where he sets a ruler down and then that's how he gets the back bevel, I don't recommend it. But if you do that, you have to use it on here too. So you are probably going to need to go further out, depending on how far it is on your stone. You have to match whatever it is on your stone. So don't do a back bevel. It just creates extra work, and it, it's not really needed unless you need a higher angle on your standard bench plane. On bevel down, or sorry, bevel up planes, it really doesn't matter, and it, it doesn't help. Um, when it comes to 
removing the burr. I've heard some guys say you go from the stone, you go to the strop to remove the burr. Absolutely, yes, you do. But they'll say, oh, you, you'll be able to see the piece of metal. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I don't know that I've ever seen the piece of metal come off unless it was like a monster burr. And it doesn't usually tend to just break off like that in like one long thing. I don't know if that's just me or not, but I've never been able to find the metal piece, so so don't try looking for it. It comes off, that's okay. If it comes off in pieces, that's okay. If you are doing this, okay, and say, for example, you go slightly too high and you strop and you start developing a burr, that is okay too. Do not stress on that. Whoa. All you do, <laughs> you still go through the steps of removing it. So you set it down, flatten it out, pull it back. Set it down, flatten it out, pull it back, okay? And that will remove the burr. If you feel it flip over, you just keep going. So flip over, go back to this side, it'll flip over, this side, flip over, this side, until it's gone. That's the most important thing when you're stropping. You need to make sure that that burr is gone. Um, I can't really think of anything else. That That's the main thing. A lot of this is going to become muscle memory. Just give it time. Don't stress on it. I guess the last thing that I want to say is when you are stropping, if you want to know how long you need to strop for and all that kind of stuff, in my opinion, it depends on how much compound too. If you have a lot of compound on there, it, I don't seem to need to strop as much. If I have a little like this because it's new, then I need to strop a little bit more. The best test that I come up with is just shaving your arm. Just take it like that and, oh, I'm shaving already. All right, look at that. So there you go, that, that's what I do. I, I test it out on my arm. Um, if you guys see me in person, you'd know that I don't have any hair right here and I don't have hair right here because I'm, I'm sharpening irons and that's okay. Other people do the, the paper test. Um, if you are gonna be shaving your arm, please don't cut yourself. If you do, I am not responsible, that is on you. So there you have it. Um, I don't want you guys to stress on this at all. That's the most important thing. You do want to try to get it to match whatever you do on the stone because that's the micro bevel that you're on. But don't stress. That's all going to come in time. You're going to figure it out. Just practice. That was the basics. Practice the basics, and you're going to start noticing different things. If you go a little bit higher on the stone, you've got to go a little bit higher on the strop. Um, you're not going to mess anything up. I think... A lot of people get scared that they're going to mess up their iron and they have to start all over. Um, on the strop, you really, you really won't unless you're, you're getting crazy with your angle. Um, even then, go back to the grinder. You know, go back and reset that primary bevel, reset your micro bevel. It's not a big deal. When you're woodworking, you have to go through those steps to learn how to do it. And then eventually, you'll get like all the other people you see on YouTube that just go through it, you know, and they don't even think twice about it because it's all muscle memory. You're going to find that in almost every single category of woodworking, so please don't stress. You guys run into, run into any questions, um, any concerns, anything like that, feel free to shoot me a message, leave a comment below. If you guys want any videos like this, let me know. I have no issue with it. Um, I love creating content. I love helping people out. Uh, this video was because somebody asked, so anything like that, please feel free to reach out to me. Don't be worried about that at all. Um, Always keep it simple. If you haven't checked out that sharpening video, check it out. I've also recently done a tool review of the Lai Nielsen versus the Veritas in the low angle 62. I have one coming up that's going to be the Lai Nielsen, excuse me, Lee Nielsen. I heard that I pronounced it wrong. Lee Nielsen, Veritas, and Stanley shooting planes. I'm going to do a comparison video of those. Um, yeah, check out the Can I Have It Facebook group. They have awesome tools going on. It's the weekend again right now, so we have auction going during the week. It's buy it nows. So if you are addicted to hand tools like I am, check out that group. Just prepare your bank account because your bank account will take a hit. <laughs> but all right, guys, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day.